Hey everyone, it's Stone here with MixCoach.com and this is a product review for Tritone Digital's Color Tone plugin as well as a tutorial on how to use saturation plugins in the mix context. Now, before I dive in, I have a confession to make and it's simply this. I love saturation type plugins and when assessing them, I tend not to think of them in terms of whether they sound good or whether they sound bad or even how close they come to the hardware devices they're emulating or inspired by. And this is because for me, saturation plugins have a particular value beyond the obvious one of adding saturation or tone or coloration to a, a source. In fact, when you selectively, saturation plugins have a wonderful ability to overcome a design limitation of many plugins, and that's the limitation of uniformity. So what do I mean by uniformity? Well, to understand it, let's imagine a mix scenario in which you apply the color of a SSL console across 24 tracks by using some type of console saturation plugin versus the sound imparted by an actual SSL console. With the plugin, you would in effect be applying the same color to every channel, resulting in a tonal or sonic buildup in particular frequency ranges. Whereas with an actual console, although each channel is theoretically identical, in practice, the, the use and aging of hardware components means that each channel behaves slightly differently and sounds slightly different. The overuse of a particular plugin in a mix can literally paint your mix into a corner by applying the exact same color or compression or EQ curves to each track with the end result that you are applying sameness to every track. And that's what I mean by uniformity. But this is where saturation plugins that behave in non-linear ways have a vital contribution to make in the mixing process. Now, like I said earlier on, the issue for me isn't whether a saturation plugin sounds good or bad. For me, that's relative and subjective. The issue for me is what contribution saturation plugins make to the mixing process in the areas of creating non-linearity, adding color and creating compression. This is where Tritone Digital's color tone really stands out because rather than providing just one or two emulations of analog gear, they have included over 40 impulse responses of devices that have been modeled through convolution modeling. The modeled devices include classic consoles, preamps, compressors, tape machines, equalizers. And as a result, I like to think of color tone as a tone box or a coloring tool that is really simple to use and it's really easy to dial in a sound that works in the context of a mix. So with that said, let's take a look at the plugin. Okay, so here we have a track that I'm currently working on. It's a bluegrass record and um, I have a wonderful vocal and a couple of acoustic guitars and a mandolin and dobro and, and things like that. So this is what it sounds like. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low That little piece of heaven on earth that I call home Strumming. Now this was a really well recorded um, song Tracked beautifully it Sounds absolutely fantastic In fact, you know, come mix time it actually doesn't need that much doing to it But let's just have a little look at the color tone plugin And see if we can find ways to enhance various elements of the mix So let's take a listen to the acoustic guitar first of all Now immediately listen to that I can hear that the there's a lovely warm body um, low, low mid warmth to the guitar and I have the classic challenge that can sometimes occur with um, acoustic guitars are recorded digitally or mixed digitally in that the articulation of the actual string sound itself is quite pronounced in other words the transient information is quite rich and, and, quite, and as a result quite edgy and quite sharp have a listen again see so you can hear the attack and the articulation is very present, which is which is fantastic. That's what I'm starting with. So, so let's take a look at the color tone plugin now. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's a very simple GUI, very straightforward, very few faders and, and buttons and, and things like that, which is really fantastic because it's, it's a joy to use and intuitive. The first thing to note is that it has this lock button here which I find particularly useful and what this basically does it when it's deselected it means if you drive the plugin uh, by increasing the input um, the output remains the same however 
if you press the lock button it means that any driving of the input will mean that your output is gain matched that way you're not responding to the loudness of the plugin and you're actually hearing what the plugins applying to the sound with a, with a, with a constant gain stage in which is fantastic so that's the first thing now in no particular order I'll just just walk through the various aspects of the interface here where it says convolution sorry here it says models rather if you click on that you have the 47 impulses that are currently modeled uh, with color tone and uh, like I said earlier on they range from everything from from preamps to tape machines to compressors um, again more tape machines uh, uh, compressors again there's even some some high pass and low pass filters there's consoles uh, there's this tele a road v the v72 is i i believe it's the telefunken v72 preamp for, that's found in abbey road and again the same same um uh, device that's been hot rodded and there's some EQs that have been modeled as well. So again, 47 different emulations or, 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 or convolutions that, are, that give you 47 different starting points in terms of tonal characteristics, which is fantastic when you, when you want to create a bit of um, variation in a mix. So they're all in there. Now underneath that, you have the quality of the convolution. So for example, you can have small medium, large, and you notice if I kind of cycle through these, this graphic display, which displays the frequency of the samples or the convolutions, uh, kind of alters. Now, when it says small, large, or medium, uh, I, I like to think of it as, la la sometimes you think large has been better and small has been, you know, not as good. I don't think of it that way. I kind of listen to it and just listen to the sound and see if it fits in the context of the mix. And if it fits in the context of the mix, I don't mind whether I use small or medium or large. Now here you have a button where you can select normal or blend mode. When you select blend modes, so another option, slow fast becomes available. Now in normal mode, when the plugin is engaged, you'll be hearing 100% of the modeling. In blend mode, you're actually blending, there's a, there's a crossfade that's cal calculated between the dry and the wet or the convoluted signal. And then the slow and fast uh, button here is a slow or fast knee that regulates the crossfade between the dry and the wet convoluted sound. Then the trim button here simply lowers the amplitude of the current loaded um, impulse response. Now this all sounds quite complicated, but once you kind of start to apply it to a sound, you realize it actually works really, really well and it's quite quite intuitive. Now this color fader here um, in, uh, multiplies the intensity of the impulse response. So you see if I kind of raise it up there, you see the impulse response gets more intense. And the warmth adds additional harmonic content to the signal. So if you notice, it doesn't actually change the frequency curve, but if you notice the color, yeah, this is like a, a light mauve type color. And if I raise it all the way up, we go to like a turquoisey type cyan color. Now in the, in the middle, this is where it's set a default. Anything that's a negative number can create a thinner, less warm sound, and anything above zero creates a much warmer sound. So at the moment I have the impulse response set to an SSL, uh, preamp. So let's just have a listen to the acoustic guitar with the SSL preamp in normal mode for now, but fully driven. Turn it on. Okay, now I'm in bypass. With it back on. Now what I'm listening for is the articulation of the guitar. With the, uh, with the, the plug-in bypassed, the transients are very sharp and very pronounced. With the plug-in engaged, the, tra the top transients are kind of smoothed over a little bit, the high frequency transients are smoothed over a little bit, and the, the warmth of the body of the, of the guitar is kind of brought up to balance out the transients. So, and as a result, I have a, a, a compressed sound without using compression because the harmonics that have been added have kind of smoothed over the sound. Have a listen again, with and without.
So which one sounds better, with the plugin or without the plugin? Well, like I said earlier, I tend not to think about saturation plugins in that way. I think about a saturation plugin in the context of, does it remove sameness? In other words, does it deal with the whole uniformity issue? Does it add a level of compression? Does it add a level of EQ? And does it add a color to the sound? And if you listen to um, you know, the example that I just played, without the plugin, uh, there's definitely more attack and there's more transient information coming through which for the mix might be perfect it might be exactly what you need but then the mix might also require something else it might require a, a, a more so, a softer approach and you might want the transients to be around as well for this particular song and the, and the genre of music it is it's supposed to be warm and inviting and whilst I may be happy with one or two elements having slightly more transient information I find that I'm, I want the sounds to feel warmer and to feel rounder because that suits the style of the, the track that I mix him. The other thing to bear in mind is one the last example I played I started with with a quite heavy-handed approach to the plugin in the sense that I had the input on 12 so I was really driving the plugin and as I kind of listened to it I kind of dialed it back a little bit and then increased some of the impulse response and then took out some of the low end and some of the weight of it and all of a sudden I felt something that sounded very similar to the original but instead it it, it, it sounded compressed but in a very natural way. Have a listen again. To my ears, what this is doing is causing the higher frequencies and the lower frequencies to kind of reach out towards each other because it's coloring in those mid frequencies. And therefore it's kind of connecting the, the higher frequencies of the guitar to the lower frequencies, which is lovely. And it's, so it's kind of like, and that's really what compression is doing, isn't it? It's kind of bringing those higher things and those lower things together. By, by shaving off or rounding off the transients, it's also causing the guitar to sink back a little bit into the mix as well. So if you listen again, if you listen to the attack of the guitar, without, then with, so it's slowly, it's kind of taking the transients off the speakers or taking the attack of the guitar off the speakers and allowing it to sit back better in the mix. Now, whether that's right for the mix or not, is going to be dependent on what else is happening in the mix you know if you have other elements that are have more attack and more transient information you may want them to be further forward and you may want this to sink back in which case you might apply slightly more you might you might go for a more extreme setting or you know in the place where we ended up right now this is a much more subtle setting it sounds very similar to what the original track was or what the original acoustic guitar sounded like but the highs have been connected to the lows the mids have been colored in it feels compressed it feels more leveled the articulation has been softened and rounded out ever so slightly um, with the with the effects that it now sits better in the mix or would sit better in the mix so again it, um how it works or how you use it really depends on you it can be a subtle effect or it can be much more extreme what's also really cool is that because it kind of applies color tone applies this kind of compression to the sound it means any type of processing that comes afterwards doesn't need to be as heavy-handed it can be applied with a light touch and i feel that's always a really good thing when working in the box i think the less plugins you can use uh, is the, the better the things end up sounding so with that said, let's, let's now try it on the vocal and see what we can do with the vocal. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow, where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low, that little piece of heaven on earth that I call home. Strumming my guitar on the front porch swing As the crickets chirp and the whippoorwill sing There with the ones I love more than anything I think Back in the woods where the tall trees grow Where the fireflies dance when the sun sings low That little piece of heaven on earth that I call home So you can see by but what I've done here with this vocal, I've used the Telefunken Abbey Road V72 model. And without it, the vocal gets lost in the mix. By applying it with just a 1.5 color, um, 
the vocal kind of comes forward, but it does something really cool to it as well. It takes a lot of the sibilance and the, the transient information and again just rounds it out and it makes the vocal feel much more compact. It's a much more subtle form of compression. I really like what it does with it. Have a listen again. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow, where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low, that little piece of heaven on Strumming my guitar on the front porch swing as the crickets chirp and, and in many ways the warmth fader and the color fader become like a form of EQ. Like I can I can dial in a lot more air just by pushing up the color. Have a listen. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow, where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low. That little piece of heaven on earth that I call home. Strumming lovely so it has this lovely air now about it uh, about the vocal it kind of brings it slightly forward but it still retains some of the warmth uh, of the vocal enhances it whilst dropping it back and again it does the same thing that it did to the acoustic guitar where it kind of takes the high frequencies and low frequencies and kind of connects them together so it feels more compact or more compressed have a listen again back in the woods where the tall trees grow where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low and, and, and the sibilance is still there, but now it kind of softens the sibilance a little bit to the point where it's not as it's not as irritating, at least to my ears. And if need be, you can always apply some type of a DSO or, or something like that afterwards. And if I'd like to try some other colors, I can just cycle through the different models. So let me hit play and cycle through the models. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow, where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low, that little piece of heaven on earth. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? Um, let's try some of these. Back in the woods where the tall trees grow, where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low, that little piece of heaven on earth that I call home. Strumming my guitar on the front porch swing as the crickets chirp and sing. There with the sound and again I'm just cycling through the different models and just listening to the color that's been added and listening to what it's doing to the high frequencies and the low frequencies is it kind of causing them to sink back is it causing them to come forward is it causing the high frequencies and the low frequencies to kind of being pulled towards each other so it feels more compressed um, and what's cool as well as I was just cycling through the convolution options where we have medium small and large you'll notice that the large convolution options have more low end and then the medium has slightly less and the small has has a less amount still so um you have a fuller sound with a larger convolution and i think as a result is it takes a little bit more cpu um but again it's a, it's another form of eq you know and that's without even going into the blend mode so let's try the blend mode now real quick back in the woods where the tall trees grow where the fireflies dance when the sun sinks low that little piece of heaven on earth Little 
So you can see you can get so many shades of color, uh, so many varieties of texture and tone, which I think therefore makes the name of this plugin color tone really appropriate. So if you're looking for something by way of saturation um, and you're looking for something that has lots of options and lots of starting points in terms of 47 different models as starting points that you can then adjust with just a few simple fader moves and, and create various shades head over to tritone digital's um, website and check out color tone there's a demo av available there so thanks for watching i hope you found this useful and i'll see you next time